Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where we are ranking all the Rome Total War factions. Slash Rome Total War Remastered, of course. Total War Rome Remastered, I believe they call it now. And yes, this is going to be completely my opinion. Um, we're going to go over factions, really uh, the factions that I like to play as. This is not a ranking of how hard they are, how easy they are, how good they are generally in terms of their troops. This is just fun, who I like, who I don't like. Um, of course we're playing a Parthia game um, at the minute on the Let's Play, so do look at that. If not, we are playing Skippy Eye next, so please keep an eye out for that. That is excellent. Now, I will be doing an official ranking as well, so keep your eye out for that, where I rank them in terms of strength, hard difficulty wise, all that sort of stuff. So, keep an eye out for that, and that's going to be more official. If you can see my bias in the background, you know where we're going to start. So, Brutii, D, absolute shite. Scipii and Julii, of course, supreme tier. But the Brutii, absolute garbage. If you like the Brutii faction, you have something wrong with you. I promise. The Brutii is the worst faction in this fucking game. I promise you. It's so bad. It's so incredibly bad that Namidia makes it look good. No, I'm joking. Of course, Brutiat is a good faction, but for memes, we put it in trash tier. Um, and to go along with the Brutii, Namidia. Namidia is slightly better than the Brutii, of course, so we'll stick them ahead. Now, Namidia isn't actually that bad. I know a lot of people say that they are terrible um, as a faction. They're pretty limited roster. But, you know, your, your location at the start of the game isn't too bad. Like, you're in the corner, you've got a long way to travel to get to any places. But you can easily take some of those juicy heartlands of Carthage early on, um, if you play well. Um, now, of course, we are playing Parthia in a campaign. And how would I rank Parthia? Um, I mean, any faction that has horse archers in them as one of the units, it is the most overpowered unit in the game. It is very cheap. Very easy to recruit, nearly everywhere you can recruit it, all you need is a level 1 stable, so all you need is a town, um, or a large town maybe I think for Parthia. Um, so you know, they are they are so good to the horse archers, that any nation that has horse archers has to be at least B. The thing with Parthia though is, it is a reasonably difficult start for anyone that's new. Um, very very difficult in fact if you are a brand new player, you have enemies all around, you have a long way to go to the Seleucids. Um, and the Seleucids can normally offer up some defense. Armenia as well. They start with a reasonably strong army with heavy spearmen, some cataphracts. So charging them down, you know, it is a reasonable bit of a problem. And on top of that, your economy is dog shit. It is trash. It's almost as trash as the Bruti I are. Um, so yeah, Parthia. I love Parthia. So <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be supreme though. We'll stick it in A. I, I don't know. I just I just enjoy playing Parthia. I love the fact that you get cataphracts and elephants. Like, what more could you want from a faction? Um, Armenia in a similar vein. We'll put them in B. Armenia on a similar vein. They have a good, strong roster. Some good heavy infantry. Some really good archers. I believe they're the only faction that gets cataphract arch uh, horse archers. Um, I know Parthia gets a cataphract camel archers, right? But camels are literally, why would you ever want a camel unit, even if it is cataphracts? Camels are so slow, they are literal slugs slugging around the battlefield. Urban cohorts can nearly catch them up running with their full plate mail. So, uh, Armenia, um, yeah, so that's Parthia's units, not Armenia's. So Armenia is good, I'd say it's better than, Ar than Parthia. Um, Definitely, and your starting position is probably a bit easier. On top of that, you get access to sea trade straight away. Who doesn't like a bit of money and a bit of sea trade? Definitely. Um, Greece, let's go for Greece next. Greece is definitely A tier. Richest, richest area in the game has, has half of it. Half of the richest area in the game at the start of the game. You are a bit spread out, so you know keeping control of some of your faraway provinces is definitely a little bit of an issue. But your faraway provinces like Syracuse, which you can defend that very easily with hoplites. Now, hoplites are very strong, and on top of that, they get access to armoured hoplites. Armoured hoplites are hugely underrated. Promise me. Promise me. No one 
really appreciates how good armoured hoplites really are. They are so, so strong. The only weakness with Greece really is your cavalry is not great. But your starting position is very good. You do start kind of at war, like you're forced into war with the Romans. I don't know whether you're already at war when the game starts. I don't think so. But you're forced into war with the Romans and Macedon very early. And that does give a bit of a challenge, but... If you're an experienced player, you'll know how to optimise. You also get access to Spartan Hoplites, who are absolute monsters. Those, combined with the Armoured Hoplites, is very, very strong. So, linked to them will go Macedon. Macedon is actually better than Greece, in my opinion. Slightly better starting position. You're not forced straight into war with the Romans. You will be forced into war with Greece, very likely Dacia or Thrace. But Dacia and Thrace, if you're on Macedon, are quite easy to beat quite easy to beat. They have reasonably good troops, but as with all the barbarian type nations, I'm talking about Daisy here, not Thrace, of course Thrace is a Hellenic type nation, um, they have low morale. They are so easy to break. If you kill their general, they're just all running. They're all running. I don't know how they all know simultaneously, especially if the general's miles away, but suddenly, ah, no, the general's dead! And they are gone. They are gone from the battle. So, uh, Macedon is, is stronger than Greece. Also has slightly stronger cavalry options, I would say, later game. Um, right, let's go more Hellenic factions then. So, Thrace, I'd say solid B tier. Orsa. I don't know, the thing with Thrace is that pushes them into B tier, I would say, is you get access to higher ranked cities to start with over, say, like Dacia. I know Macedon and, and Greece do as well. You also get the crazy Bastani people who have two hit points. Why does that unit have two hit points? Are they that crazy bastards that they come back from the dead like Barrow Whites and Lord of the Rings and start going ham on people? You've killed me! <sighs> and killing them again. I can't believe you've done this. Um, so I'd say Thrace, generally a solid B tier. Uh, starting position, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, you will fight Macedon, who I'd say is a, has a stronger roster than you. The problem with Macedon and Greece at the start of the game, the AI loves to recruit absolute trash. You'll be fighting armies full of militia hoplites for days. Um, so it's quite easy to beat them. The other thing is, though, they push units out like there's no tomorrow. Like rabbits pushing out babies. It's... Crazy, like genuinely crazy. So, I would say Thrace is a solid, solid B tier. Now, let's find something that we could probably put in C tier. Mm, they're all, I feel bad putting them in C tier. So, I'll put Thrace in C tier then. Ah, Thrace isn't that bad. B tier. Is anyone going to be in C tier? I don't know, looking at this roster. Um, so the next Hellenic faction, we have Carthage. Carthage is strong, guys. Carthage is a great faction. You are spread out at the start of the game, and you basically go to war with every single neighbour you have. Numidia will attack you. Spain will attack you, who are the most annoying enemy to fight because of their split lands. So you go one way with your army, they come and take uh, Cordoba. You go the other way with your army, they come and take Cordoba. Whatever you do, <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, so nullifying them, as well as the Gauls. The Gauls tend to want to attack you as well, which is kind of crazy to me. If you ally the Gauls, though, you should have an easy time in Iberia. But of course, North Africa and um, Sicily, you should be able to beat the Romans. You start off with elephants as well, and if you know how to game the game by... Taking um, your elephants first, killing them off, seeing how much damage they do, um, and then letting some of your units die in order for the elephants to be replenished. That's good. I don't know whether they remove that from Remastered, you know. I think it shares casualties equally, but I can't quite remember. But yeah, you get elephants very early on. You get a very nice city in Carthage. Good sea trade. Numidia is a weak enemy, easy to kill, just annoying. Um... Obviously, the Romans. If you can get into Rome, uh, like Hannibal, very early on, you have such an easy time. When the Romans are gone, there's no one who can stand in your way. And basically, when you have the um, Italian peninsula, all you 
you've got then is you can take Spain, the rest of North Africa, and go at the rest of the map at your leisure. I've also got a good, strong unit pool. I like the unit. The Sacred Band is OP as hell. Elephants, amazing. Armoured Elephants, obviously incredible. So they have a good, rounded unit roster, I would say. And I like Carthage. How, in terms of... I like them. I'm going to put them ahead of Macedon and Greece. I know loads of people are going to hate me for that, but... Just because I like them more. I like elephants, okay? Um, right. Let's go Dacia. Dacia isn't too bad. But I'm going to say most barbarian factions are hampered by the fact that they can't build proper cities. You can't build proper roads. You have very limited building options compared to a lot of these other more civilized nations. More civilized nations, according to the game. Um, like, you can't have academies for your generals to get better, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, they do have a reasonably strong roster, though. I can't uh, dock their roster any points. The roster's okay. Like, it's not too bad. And you have quite a fun time. It, it's in a reasonably good position to start with. You just take some rebel settlements rather than declaring war on other people. So, I'd say it's kind of an easy start to the game. Uh, but it, that, in my book, makes it worse, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Um, but yeah, good fun. Good, an okay faction. I will say, you you might be the only C-tier one we have. Let's see. Bretons. Now the Bretons, they have conflicted me a lot over the years. When you first start playing Rome Total of War, when I was a kid, you're like, chariots, damn. Chariots are strong. And then you get more and more into the game and you realise chariots, more often than not, are just annoying. <laughs> They're annoying when you fight against them. They're annoying when you try and use them because the pathing in this game is not quite good enough to, to like use them properly, especially in cities. Like you can't use chariots in cities. They will just die. Like they will just like fail miserably at running around. Quite often they, they the back of the unit doesn't catch up with the front and then the front stops but then the whole unit stops. So then if they have spearmen, the spearmen just come in and kill your chariots. So they are annoying. But I'm going to put them in... I'm going to put them solidly in B tier. I was going to put them A tier just because of the head hurlers. The head hurlers are cool as fuck. Like, so cool. They literally throw heads at the enemy. Severed heads. Like, crazy people. Uh, they also get druids, which they're cool as well, and morale boosting. You need druids if you're going to be successful with the Bretons, or really, really, really good generals. Because as with all the barbarian factions like we spoke about, their morale is pure trash. Trash, trash, trash morale. Trash, I tell you. Almost as trash as the Brutii. Um, right, let's look at some other barbarian factions then. Gaul... I think Gaul is good. I'd say it's a B plus if or an A minus. I think we'll keep it in B though. Uh, because we'll save A for one more faction. Um, yeah, the Gauls are, are okay, but then again they do suffer from that. Uh, the, the barbarian uh, failing of not being civilized. Um, and can't build cities. Um, can't well. We can build minor cities. You can't go higher. Can't build roads. I don't think they can. Can they build paved roads? I'm not sure. They definitely can't build highways. I think only the Romans and Seleucids and uh, maybe one or two others can build um, highways. But not many. Maybe it's even just the Romans. But yes, Gaul is reasonably good. They have good late tier units, if not the best archers in the game. Like some of the best archers in the game, um, apart from the Cretans, but. You can only recruit the Cretans if you're Greece, I believe, um, on Crete. So, you know, the goals are decent. I'd say decent. The, the, the one thing is you're a barbarian faction again, so low morale, bad cities. Start with just villages. So all you can recruit are levy spearmen who break at the sound of their own horses running past. So... <laughs> You know, the start of the game isn't too easy. And Germania and Britain normally come for you hard, along with the Romans. But if you play it right and you take uh, the Romans down early, you'll have a breeze of a game. Easy mode game. But that's the same with any faction, really. Right, Spain. Spain has to be 
one of the trashest nations. Like, Spain, unfortunately, was just ruined by the developers for making their land split. The only good unit they have are the Bull Warriors, and the Bull Warriors, when I say good unit, are mega good for a barbarian faction. Mega good. Mega, mega good. Really good, in fact. Like, amazing unit. But by the time you get them, you've just been fighting with bloody Scutarii and whatever Iberian infantry they have. Like, And you're on top of that, you're not like Carthage, where you have access to big cities and good buildings um, and great uh, roads, all that sort of stuff to get you money. Like, Spain is just trash. Sturica is so far away from anything that you just, you're just... Getting troops out of there is impossible. Impossible. Uh, the, the one side, other side to that is um, that getting an army to there for the enemy is very hard. Um, so, very defensible. But uh, on top of that, you are very likely going to have to declare war on Gaul or Carthage straight away. Um, which are both stronger factions than you, especially early game. So, Spain unfortunately goes D. D tier. Egypt. Similar thing with the chariots. I don't rate Egyptian chariots. I know that might sound like sacrilege to many of you people, but chariots are just too annoying to use. Too much micro intensity. The one thing chariots are amazing for is breaking enemies. So if you've got a nice solid set line, and you can do with, with Egypt, um, in terms of having phalanxes set, all that sort of thing, and you charge the chariots into the back, it's very likely to break your enemies. You also start at a very um, sort of easy position to defend. All you've got is Numidia next to you, and then there's the Seleucids who are spread out, and at the start of the game, all the Seleucids will, will recruit, I, I promise you, is Militia Hoplites. And Militia Hoplites, as we know, are absolute dog shit. Like, a complete dog shit. So, you should have a very easy time taking those guys out. So, Egypt is easily an A tier. On top of that, you get those three lovely cities in Memphis, Tennessee, um, Alexandria, and Thebes. Um, nicely away from the enemy. I mean, there's Numidia nearby, but you, should, you shouldn't have a problem defeating Numidia or defending those cities against Numidia. So, you do have a brilliant starting position. For that, we'll probably... Ooh, and Macedon and Greece do have good starting positions as well. I'd say late game units, Macedon and Greece have better, but I'll probably just stick the Egyptians in between them, just to annoy them even more. Um, Scythia. Now, if I put Parthia up here, I have to put Scythia here as well. Horse archers, as we spoke about. Unfucking believable unit, and you have access to lots of them. I should put you behind Parthia because you don't get elephants, uh, but you do have a slightly easier position to start in than Parthia. Definitely, you can kind of pick your enemy. Um, you can either go down to Thrace, you can go across to the Germans, don't go across to the Germans, that would be dumb, not rich cities at all. Um, or you can go south down to Armenia and Parthia. Um, so those and those cities are okay, they're not that rich, but they're okay. Uh, but Armenia, yeah, nice couple of cities. Catias, I think it is, on the coast where you can get some nice trade. Uh, Chersiones for you as well is a good settlement. You are hampered by the fact, again, you're a barbarian faction. But some of their units are very strong. Like the um, um, the female horses, horse people are amazing. They, uh, they have great attack and charge and great morale. So uh, some of your units are just so strong. Uh, that you've got to be up there B tier. Not quite A tier, but definitely B tier. Now we're here to the three baddies. Nah, I'm joking. Germania, the only barbarian faction that's going to go into A tier. Um, Germania definitely has the strongest roster out of all the barbarian factions, in my opinion. You get Night Stalkers, you get Berserkers, who are the most fun unit to use in the game, I would say, apart from maybe Armoured Elephants. Like, they are so fun to use. You see, I'm smashing people to pieces, smashing enemies to pieces. It's fantastic to watch. Um, and it's good fun. Again, Barbarian Faction, so your building roster's limited. You've not got great, you know, building options. But your temples are very good. That's one thing. Your temples are very good. Uh, and you've got good variety there. You, want, you can get growth. You can get, um, I think... Can you get armor upgrades from one of them? You can definitely get military bonuses from your temples, which is always mega strong. That's why Scipii are number one up here. 
uh, because you can get a temple that adds armor. Now, in Remastered, I believe that Babruti, I get a temple with lore, but I'm not quite sure. But that's why I would generally put the Brutei as the worst faction. Because in the original, the worst Roman faction, so should I say. Because in the original, they didn't have a temple that provided law. And you've got to remember, law is one of the most important um, things for making money. On top of that, it's a, it's, it's a double whammy with law. It's fucking brilliant. It, get as much law as you can in your faraway settlement. Increases happiness of the, of the citizens. On top of that... It reduces corruption, which you always get in faraway settlements, remember that. So you make money and make your citizens happy at the same time. So, fantastic, fantastic thing to have. And that's why I say Brutei is bottom, because you don't get that law temple in the original. I believe uh, someone's going to be in the, uh, in the comments saying, actually, you do, I don't know. whatever. I, I believe that now. <laughs> Tell me if I'm right or wrong, whatever. Uh, Pontus. Pontus is a fun, fun faction. Uh, they're not quite A tier because I'd say that their unit roster is really. Oh, do they get? Uh, they get shield, silver shield legionaries. Uh, they could be close to A tier. They're they're like a B plus um, plus. Same as Armenia. They get silver shield legionaries, which are good, good units like fake Romans. They get great pikemen. They get cataphracts. Ah, they're in an easy start position. I've, I've put myself, I've, I've put myself into it. Oh, ah, I've talked myself into putting them A tier. Look at C tier. Shit, I'm just too happy. I'm just too uh, resoundingly happy about these factions. They're just all brilliant, apart from bloody Spain and Namibia and the, the damn Brutii. Um, but yeah. I think Pontus, yeah, it, it's good. Another Hellenic faction. And the last, but not least, the Seleucids. Of course, big Seleucos. Get up there, my buddy. Big S tier. I love the Seleucids. Really hard start. Probably the hardest start in the game, which makes it S tier, in my opinion, to start with anyway. Um, on top of that, you get such a good unit roster. Really good. Really good. Amazing. Amazing unit roster. Sorry, I'm getting very excited about the Seleucids. Big Seleucos. And um, so did you know Antiochus named a load of cities after himself. And there's actually a load of cities called Antioch. It's not just the town in Syria. Um, he was a Seleucid um, leader. I just love the Seleucids. I, I, can't, I can't justify why they're S tier. Probably because it's the hardest start in the game. But then on top of that, you get a really good unit roster. So they do get the ability to become an absolute powerhouse late game powerhouse on top of that really good building roster so yeah i love that. i just love the Seleucids, and i probably do a campaign of them at some point but that's my faction tier list guys let me know what you think you probably hate it i know you're gonna hate it and i'm sorry um but as i said this is just my opinion on how they feel this isn't like an official oh this one's hard so therefore it's this yeah you know, it's just my my thoughts on each faction, really. Uh, and which ones I like to play. Like, I, I love to play some of these. So, like, Parthia, maybe Scythia could be down a bit. Um, could be behind these guys or whatever. But I like playing them. Seleucids so probably shouldn't be there because it's so hard. But that's what I like, so that's why they're up there. And, of course, the Brutii. Absolute trash, always remember that. Now, I have got a Parthia Let's Play on the channel, so do subscribe to that. Go and watch it, I'll put a link in the description or in the comments. Um, and I will be playing Skippy Eye soon, so please check that out. Please do subscribe, guys. Like the video if you did like it. You probably hated it, though, like I'm saying, so give it a dislike if you absolutely hated it. That would be fantastic. Please don't dislike it. But thanks, guys, and I will see you again on another video.